just because something comes from Japan doesn't make it weebish. You know that, right? Oop. I think by definition it does. No, weebish means like you hug a body body pillow and is, stuff like is, that. Is weebish? Does weebish have any? Yes, it, it is weebu trash, of course. Uh, but does weebish have any relation to Jewish? No. Uh, speaking of that, if you had a choice to bring anyone back, who would you who would you bring back? Um, Alan Rickman. Okay. What about, what about you? You had a choice to bring anyone back from the dead. Yuri Gagarin. Say Yuri Gagarin. Gaddafi? <laughs> it's not what I said. No, I, I, I'm You're trying just going to, with I'm, G names? I'm just giving him a hint. Gandalf. Um, just trick question. Gandalf's not dead. He's just... He sailed to the Undying Lands. Huh. Believe you it or not, know? you don't die there. I could bring back anyone. Anyone. Uh, it's a lot and lot of people. A lot of people well, to choose from. I do see his. his all issue. right. Well, it doesn't matter because the like the little joke I was going to set up here just is being. It's too long. It's been too long. <laughs> it's getting stale. <laughs> yeah, it's getting stale. That's a difficult ex- one, man. I don't want to explain it, but doesn't matter. Joke's gone. Too bad. I mean, to be fair, Zach, I don't know why I said Alan Rickman, but the the lot the roulette wheel of dead people in my head spun and it landed on <laughs> Alan Rickman, so I went with it. And then, did you not hear my second one, Yuri Gagarin? You're gone? No, Yuri Gagarin. Who's that? Yuri Gagarin. Oh, the you astronaut. Can, you can type the for cosmonaut. That one. Oh. He was uh yeah, he was the first human. I wanted to say he was the first human. Then I doubted. I'm like, wait, was he? Mm. But he was the first human in space. Hmm. Cause the the word that then the, you know what the word that came to my head when I doubted myself was? Hmm. Laika. Well, Laika was a very good boy, she wasn't a human. <laughs> I have come to my decision. Epstein. Right. All right. It's just as okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for. What was your joke now, Ryan? It's time. Who would you? I'll tell you later. Okay. See, is that the joke? Tell me when I'm. The joke was you said about Jewish, and then my first immediate thought was, who would you bring back it if you could? And then you that was supposed to leave the beauty like, wait, what does Jewish people make Ryan think of? Who could he bring back to life? Get the joke. Uh, yeah, not really. All right. No, fine. I don't want you to. I would like to continue to live in the subjective world. Right. I don't know. See, yes, he was sort of getting the idea. It was supposed <laughs> to make you think. Is like he's trying to try to say he wants to bring back Hitler. <laughs> I what it, it does? <laughs> could you tell that for the way I was looking at you? That I was trying to figure out if you were trying to make a Hitler joke or not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about Christ. It was the well, most my... roundabout one I've ever heard of. That's ancient history. Yeah, we we're over that. Do you know that? Do you know that actually confuses Muslims? What that humans? There are not humans. That Christians <laughs> and Jews are such good friends. Meanwhile, neither of them really like Muslims for some reason, despite the fact that Jews were the ones that killed Christianity's greatest figure. Oh yeah, for for years, um, Christians went after Jews for quote unquote killing killing mm-hmm. the Messiah. But yeah. that, that's also um, there's a couple great great debates. Yeah, but they Christians t- are Nazis. Yeah, but they took their land. <laughs> what? You said that Christians went after Jews. Hmm. You saying that Christians are the original Nazis? Well, I mean, if if by Nazi all you mean <laughs> I don't is know if I want to go down Jew. this road. <laughs> keep it going. I don't want to go. I don't want to keep going down this road. It's nice. To, it's nice to know. <laughs> it's nice to know that Zach would concede if I was going to bring someone back to life between Jesus and Hitler, he would automatically assume it was Jesus. <laughs> like, well, yeah. which is good. It's I think he'd be a great means, guy to ask questions. That means he has a lot of pause. Yeah, I guess. But also, if he comes back, that's not good for us. Well, I don't know if you've seen the world, but well, it, well depends. It's... Depends on if you I don't know. The he, might, he might want to. He might story, be running a little late. How many stories do you hear about Hitler going to talk to lonely whores at Wells? None. Well, <laughs> he's got you there. <laughs> <laughs> depends because there's could, at least one for Jesus. Could, 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 could you assume that a bunker? And if we live in Da Vinci well? Code world, then one of those is his bloodline. If the bunker was built on a well, if the bunker was built on a well, and his wife. Was promiscuous. What's this show, Zach? What are we doing? I think it's pop culture unboxing, and we're trying to figure who out whether you? or not we want to be good Christians or whether or not we want to like talk about. Who are you? Oh, who am I? I'm Zach. And who are you? I, I'm regretting this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. I'm not regretting this. Ross. 
Right. Yeah. Did and you wanted me to finish it for you? No. I just didn't know if I wanted to finish it or not. <laughs> or just leave it hanging. Spoon feed you Do you remember what name? I named you? No. I don't. <laughs> An episode or two ago? Sad. It was two I episodes ago. Buddy, I don't even remember what yesterday was. Ryan so. Nair Ryan. Ryan Nair Ryan. Nair Ryan. Ryan. Like John? Huh? Like John? What do you mean? John, John Nair? Nair? <laughs> no. Yeah, I guess with that. No, with an N and no E. It's just the I explained this to you last time. The, the middle one's just Ryan backwards. Why is there an entry for Nayer on Urban Dictionary? Can we read this on the show? <laughs> so do you want to know what Nair is on, on, on the Urban Dictionary? Is it appropriate? To camp or spawn kill. You like this me going back only yeah, reading words. Uh, making an online multiplayer game unfair and often impossible to win. After that noob <laughs> nared in the corner for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a little bit of a stretch, I guess, but that's a... Uh, I mean... He's nairing everyone that spawns. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ryan, if you don't I prefer to go... I can't even move my character. If you, don't, if you prefer not to go by Ryan, Nair, or Ryan, what would you prefer to go by? Mm, I mean... Feel like you have something funny you want to say, so why don't you it, let it, it spill it, the beans? Let's hear it, funny man. It, 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 well, I mean, it depends on what you find. Spill funny. the tea. I mean, if, if if you're Nair, I mean, you might as well be a Planned Parenthood. What? Um. <laughs> what? You're hey, like... Spawn Camp. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> God damn it, Zach. <laughs> I think I just killed both of them. <laughs> God, I feel like I, <laughs> who's who's the guy that plays Star Lord? I feel like him on part. Which Rec, one? Uh, Andy. He plays Andy. Oh, that's Star Lord. That's yeah. Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. I feel like Chris. Pratt. Not to be confused with the rat uh, that plays Sebastian in Suicide Squad. Chris uh, Pratt. Chris Pratt. But I do know the transition you wanted to make. Go for it, big boy. <laughs> I, well, let him finish what he okay. say. Oh no, there's 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 a funny outtake with Chris Pratt where they're they're talking about good comeback stories and he says oh. Kim Kardashian and every like two like the two guys immediately lose it like Aubrey Plaza smacks him and like everybody realizes what he said right after that. <laughs> It was really funny. <laughs> I know the video he's talking about. If I remember, I'll put it in the show notes. If yeah. not, just search Chris Pratt outtakes. I'm sure it'll be at the oh, top. Oh, yeah. It'll, it'll right. be near there. That and his ice cream one. Okay. So, wait. <laughs> Speaking of... Star, I forgot what the trans- Star Lord. Okay, yeah. You do it. You know it better than me. Okay. Well, speaking of Star Lord and Matt mentioning that they're... Depending on which Star Lord you're talking about, we have a new one. Thanks mm-hmm. to Marvel What If... Oh, there's a new Star Lord with What If? Yeah, yeah. No, oh, that's it's awesome. Played by the the legendary Chadwick Boseman. Yeah. As so, remember how Chadwick Boseman plays Black Panther, plays mm-hmm. T'Challa. T'Challa. Yeah. Well, in this case, Prince well, T'Challa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the What If of for this week is What If instead of uh, Yondu going and picking up Peter, he decided I'll just make Craglin do it, <laughs> and Craglin yeah. got gets the wrong person. Craglin oh wow! Being Sean Gunn in the movie. That's the okay. That's that's literally the what if moment. It's yeah. just like what happens if this happens if instead of Yondu decided he was lazy, but I don't like. I I, I disagree with a lot of things. I had issues about yeah. this episode. The first one was just the first. The, so we talked about the first what if I think already. The right. issue was it just went too fast. They tried. They were condensing too much into thirty minutes. I will say this one at least. Oh, that's right. Because I remember you saying they didn't let moments hang. Right. This yeah. one has a story at least. Like has yeah. like a, a like a quick a story. It doesn't. It's it's not a copy and paste. Yeah. It's not like st- you can copy my homework. Just don't make it <laughs> you know look obvious. Mm-hmm. Which I I do appreciate that because just how different Ch- T'Challa and um uh. What's Star Lord's real name? Peter Quill. Peter Quill. Mm. Just how different they are as people. Mm-hmm. Um, so of course T'Challa's Star Lord is going to be different, but like I don't know if it's like spoilers. I don't know if it's converting Thanos away from his mad god tendencies. Well, that's good. The, I think that's the joke. And turning the one dude into a fangirl. Well, that's basically. the thing. That's that was what I was clear. They were making a joke that somehow. 
just because it's Black Panther, it's T'Challa, who I'm just saying in all of the films, never I never registered that he was like an adventurous kid or like he wanted to go on wild adventures. Uh, I just never... Well... I, I don't know, but... I, I, I disagree with that just on the standpoint of like... When you were the age he was shown at the beginning, you probably wanted to be an astronaut or something. Right. Well, and so you just grow just out of it. That, and I just think that. So what if he never had the opportunity to grow out of being that, of wanting to adventure? I guess explore? that's that's a good point. I just I just feel like you're reaching a lot. It's, yeah. And there were a lot of callbacks. I, Matt or Zach, did you see it? Did you watch the episode? No, I have not. So at one point, because the main baddie that they fight at the end of this one is the collector. Mm-hmm. And like, obviously. Yeah. The, the excuse of the collector is he just collects everything. Yeah. Uh, at one point, he pulls out like a chest that has all these weapons. It has Thor's hammer on it. Yeah. It has Captain America's shield. Uh, it has Hela's headgear yeah. from Ragnarok. And you're like, well, that's strange because that puts some weird implications that are if all they- of them are dead. You're, you're in a universe where Thanos won. Well, in this case, Thanos didn't happen. So in this, in this what if, Thanos, before he continues his plan to collect the Infinity Stones, he's just convinced not to do it. Even though he constantly says, it is the right, it may, he's like, <laughs> like it. And that is a funny gag. Yeah, like it turned that into a joke. But yeah. like, at every, t- but Thanos is a good guy now. All because of King T'Challa. Becoming Star Lord instead. Did, well, I was gonna say, did, because, does like he say something to well, him? So the or? point of st- what Star Lord does, what this Star Lord, where Peter was really like selfish, mm-hmm. uh, King T'Challa is constantly doing what's right for yeah. everybody. Like everything he does is is in the benefit for other planets. So he's so, a super. He is a hero, and people respect him for it. So yeah. like the way they the way they establish it at the very beginning is that. Um, so you remember the opening of Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, when Peter goes to steal the orb thing. Yeah, the orb, and then he sa- he tells the guy, "I'm Star Lord," and he's like, "Who?" Ooh. Yeah, they flip that where um where the, where T'Challa opens the helmet, and he says, "Do you know who I am?" or something like that, and the guy flips his lid and is like, "Oh my God, you're Star Lord." He has like yeah, a, so he, he, he has, has the f- reputation. Yeah, but and, and they take it to the maybe I just I'm I'm, I'm going in with the wrong expectations for the show. Well, I think but what's like, interesting is it seems like what they did is they were like, what if Black Panther was Star-Lord? And instead of looking at it saying, okay, you know, an eight, a 10-year-old kid that was abducted by aliens, how is that going to affect your growth pattern? It was like, let's just have adult set up Black Panther now be well, it's Star-Lord. Not, well, this is not a scientific experiment of what no. happens when you put a 10-year-old in space. It's a TV well, no. show. It's well, a no, TV I, I, show I, I, with superheroes. But, but, but I think that's kind of what you guys <laughs> but, are talking about, where it's right. super weird, where it's like, it's not like he's acting anything like Star-Lord and they have different tendencies. It's like a completely different yeah. person playing in I'm that I'm saying, role. like, you're yeah. going to tell me that the Thanos, the Mad Titan, the man who lost all of his people, just suddenly, like found a new way is like, oh, no. Yeah, uh, yeah I'll be good. Yeah. I also still believe that what I was going to do was yeah. right, but also I won't do it because I think it's bad. that's the bigger thing that I yeah, have an issue with. Is it, it seemed like he still thought it was the right thing to do. Well, that's what he kept saying but, it was. So, well, but no, uh, you're right also that yeah. these, so far, both of these, it's very clear that they started with the idea of what if uh, Captain, which the Captain Carter one has been brought up before by people, mm. but the which what I if still T'Challa like. was Star-Lord. They started with that premise and then made it fit. Yeah, they made the story fit. Well, them. the bad thing is, I like so. the, I like these characters. I do yeah. like the mm. animation. Is I still I, don't like the animation. I don't but, either. But yeah. what well, do you know? What so after watching the last episode, I realized what they're emul- emulating. What they're emulate? They're trying to emulate into the Spider Verse just at a higher frame and without the without the uh, comic book bubbles. Because it mm. looks, because I've watched Into the Spider Verse, yeah, it looks like the characters themselves, like the, like the pe- like how they're designed, look yeah. exactly the same. Doesn't Spider Verse have much like? Doesn't it tend to be? It's it it's flatter with sharper lines though, isn't it? With like yeah, more distinct so that's, lines. That's yeah. where in this it's, it's that, but it's that, but it's know? CGI formed. Because I think so. Like it's a different, like it's a three D simulation. So it looks that it yeah. looks very weird when you put it next to Spider. You're like, oh, I see what they're doing. It looks. So very, me, I need to find yeah. something here. It it's it's, very it's similar enough to where like you know it was inspired by that kind of idea and that kind of yeah, storytelling. Like okay, that's exactly it. I'm looking at a picture of Spider Verse right now, and like 
So this right here, it's uh, it, I just googled Spider Verse, and it's a side by side of Tom Holland and um, and uh, Miles Morales from Spider Verse. So like, I can see what you mean. They're going for the style, but That's the difference is in Spider Verse, they 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 did two D lines on the characters' three D faces, correct, to break up the face a little bit, and like the mouths are much more distinct. But they don't do with, that like for shadows because no. the mouths are what bug me in the in the what if. Well, they don't is do the it mouth in the what almost if. just seems like it's just floating in there and not. The the mouth moving isn't motivating anything else yes. in the face. Oh, that's and it weird looks like enough. it almost starts. It, it looks like it wants to start clipping. Well, that's and, what I'm saying. If you watch into the Spider Verse and then you watch one of the what ifs, you realize the similarities is like, oh, they're trying to emulate that style, but they're cutting all the stuff that makes that style look really cool to me. It's 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 very strange. It's it's a very strange look, especially yeah. you see it really bad in this episode. Versus like the Captain Carter one, because in this one there's there's more fancy colors and it's more vibrant and everything like that. Where mm. Captain Carter takes place in the fifties, where neon lights were not considered cool; they were just lights. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that does kind of make sense. I think what makes a really good what if is like all things the same. What if this one thing changed, and then you run out that line of logic. Like, I think that's what makes a cool what if. So, like, when you change things that seem to be irrelevant, right. kind of like you said, like, now that Thanos doesn't care, it's like, well, what made him not care? What about, what the, did T'Challa do as Star-Lord right. that made that big of an impact on him? And, like, I think that would be fine if you could combine it. Like, if you could find a, a, a difference that Peter Quill did versus also, T'Challa. I just, but I just feel like Loki set up a thing that I don't... That makes the makes everything that's happening feel like less important to me, because if these are all going to be connected, the one thing that Loki sets up is the fact that the once they killed Kang the Conqueror, the whoever what whoever what he was called in Loki, once they mm -hmm. killed Kang the Conqueror, that meant every version of Kang is going to start going into a war. So right now there is a potential war between the universes. We're just seeing like other things happen in that universe. Okay. I think yeah. I'm, so I'm so just, to I'm, me, to me, it just feels like it, it feels, it doesn't feel as like good to me. Yeah. So, that's kind of what I was talking about two or three weeks ago where I was like, it's going to be either irrelevant or it's going to be, it's going to be beyond anything you're going to understand at this point. It's just not going to, yeah, it's not going to hit the same. And, and that's the thing is I'm not, and look, I'm not saying they're not entertaining. They're definitely entertaining. It's mm. just like, I don't have the care, and I also I'm becoming an old cynical man, so yeah, I don't. So I think I'm re so I'm, I just, so the whole time you guys are having this discussion, I'm just staring at a picture of uh, Captain Carter from What If, just trying to figure out what bugs me about it. And as I'm just kind of scrolling through, looking at other stuff, I really notice it with this picture of Yondu. They all look like Barbie dolls. Right. They all look like they're out of Toy mm -hmm. Story almost, and they have this. There's this weird thing where like. When you're looking at them, especially when you're looking at them almost face, almost head on, mm -hmm. their face has no depth, but it also has depth features on it, like sh some shadows and stuff like that. So there's just this weird thing going on with it. I don't know. It just yeah, their face looks painted on rather than it actually being. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. It looks like they drew, like even for shadows, that they drew the shadows on too. Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know. It just and yeah. every, everything looks too soft. So you see, so like um, Bucky's unrecognizable to me in that. Just because he's so much softer in that show than Sebastian right. Stan actually is. Mm -hmm. Same with Yondu. Right. Like no, they're I both just... they both have kind of gruff or faces. Yeah. yeah, they're not ugly enough. That's a big thing for Yondu, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Rooker is not a conventionally attractive man. No. And they kind of molded him that way in what it yeah. There's just I don't know. You would think they'd have the money to put in to but... make this animation top tier. And if it's an artistic choice, I get it. But like these, I, I will yeah. say they're fun to turn your they're they're fun to turn your brain off and watch. Yeah, they do yeah. action scenes really well. Like but, the collector fight was really cool. Yeah, but that's like, like I said, because of the thing that Loki has set up that yeah. Kang the Conqueror has. It's the same thing. It's going to be with this Star Wars Vision show, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, the Kang the Conqueror stuff. The fact that he's gone, and now there's billions of that Kang the Conqueror. Now they're all going to war with each other, and that that what we thought was going to be ridiculous, not true is actually happening. All these universes are having a war. You realize like, Oh, this stuff is happening in one of these universes and it doesn't matter because <laughs> like, yeah. there's yeah. something bigger happening under. Well, and you're like, well, uh, that's in, you know, it's, it's a strange, it's but, strange to me. It's strange. Uh, you wonder too, though. So like, um, cause he's Kang is human. Yes. So you see things like, well, the one that we, so 
the one that we saw was human. He's he's he said oh, before there's right. yeah, other. Yeah. But hmm. like how many how many of those universes like cuz I think it's made it's mentioned in Loki that the um that a lot of a lot of choices you make create a small divergence but then the timeline corrects. It it t- it takes a big decision to actually split the timeline. Mm. Um but how many of those big decisions then lead to a timeline where it either ends up wrapping back through to the main timeline or it just ends up destroying itself. Like right. uh yeah. what made me think that is um the end uh and he mentions it at the end of this last what if when you they cut away to Peter Quill working at a Dairy Queen because he didn't get abducted yeah and ego shows up and is like hey son and then the watcher who narrates the show and is like this om- omniscient being that watches over ryan would know more mm-hmm. um he makes a comment about how maybe this universe won't won't keep going or something like that right so i mean that so that made me wonder like yeah you know there's all these splits but how many of them just end I themselves know, but i do think that this is going to be one of those things where each seat there's going to be multiple seasons of this show and each season is going to be its own like overarching story that all connect to each other and all these different what if events are actually going to like diverge together and then that's going to end that universe maybe the end that's what i think mm. but i don't know i could be wrong that this show's confusing like this show's yeah. very confusing because you yeah. don't really know what's going on and it also like half the half of the reviewers that have seen this show have got to see three episodes we yeah. still have only seen that's fair yeah so it's like it's hard like you it's might hard get a to, bit better idea here on the next one right because it's hard to understand like okay well reviewers can't say anything really yeah like we now we now know we know a gist of what's going to happen on the next one we know everything can conti- everything was the same except well they've already uh, said some, what the episode order is right publicly that like because people figured out that like yeah. the order of some cover art or something was in order of the episodes, right? Like who it showed, right? So like we know, I I don't know what they all are because I'm just trying to keep it away from me. I know that only one of them is a zombie episode. I think it's, I think it's seven. the last one. Seven's a, a zombie oh, episode, mm-hmm. but um, like the next episode, we know what ha- what if Tony Stark gets assassinated. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, because and that. we see that. Because, right. Obviously, I didn't see it, but I didn't see that that was like what it was. that's what that's what everyone's implying okay. is like what they what it because there's like a scene where like uh black widow is standing over top of tony's dead body in the iron man suit and I'm like okay well what if iron man doesn't become an avenger it's like basically yeah. so it's like i don't okay i, I totally uh, thought they well, were gonna go back to i can uh, i can tell you what happens uh new york gets blown up yeah well, <laughs> like, yeah there you go I, I can tell you what happens well i <laughs> I, to be honest with you, I thought they were going to go back to Civil War where Bucky almost shot him, but he doesn't put the put the glove on. So no, this threw, is, threw this his is, hand and threw his head and then Iron Man you move 2, on from there. Well, in Iron Man 2, when he's like eating a donut from the donut, yeah. hole, he gets like shot there. Hmm. <laughs> or he gets shot in a bathroom or something. It's just like, <laughs> it just, but it happens there. It's some like weird... You're like, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that's the I, thing. I, this is what I said I was worried about. It's like, if you're just going to start telling random what if stories, like you're just going to change. Like, what if Tony Stark died? It's like, oh, we know what would happen because we saw what yeah, happened with yeah. Tony Stark. You know, I, well, you like, could do something cool where it's like, what if he didn't come back through the portal? So right. the nuke is gone. And then what happens after the nuke is gone? Right. He like, gets captured by Thanos. And now he's using Thanos' technology to escape the jail. Yeah. Now you get a new Iron Man. Well, yeah. Know. You get a different different style. Yeah. Oh, uh, these have, are canon. These are canon. These are canon in the MCU. Just really, in a different universe. So, see, and I, now, now it just becomes weird. I don't like it. But I think so, so, like up. some of it makes sense for setting things up. Yeah. Like we've already got Captain. America. We've got Anthony Mackie as Captain America. He's confirmed to be in the next one. Right. Um. So now you've set it up so you can have you, you can have another one. You could have Captain Carter. So you've set her up to be to be brought in as mm. effectively Captain Britain, but she's Captain Carter. Yeah. Um. And so, and I guess you're I guess you're setting up a T'Challa Star Lord, but. You know that, and one. you're gonna yeah, set up a mad titan, around. a mad titan Gamora. That's set up, yeah, with a with a good guy Thanos, and then Thor if he never learned his lesson from Thor one, yeah. So bro Thor, yeah, like there's party a Thor. dead party Tony Thor. Stark or just all these weird zombie things. Tony like, Stark. And, and I imagine the idea is that for right now these stories are all just on their own. They're in some universe that won't get touched. But if some director or someone has a storyline where they're like, oh, it'd be cool to do a multiverse thing, mm-hmm. they can pluck someone out of one of the what if things. Well, they could pluck out Captain Carter. Or I think what they should what they should have done is instead of confirming this as canon right now, they should just do what Star Wars Visions is doing. Wait. 
Yeah. Star Wars Visions isn't canon. Nothing yeah. that happens in Visions is canon except oh. for the except for the first two episodes. Oh, they. Oh, that's they take, I thought all of them weren't weren't canon. So someone said it's rumored that the first two episodes are canon and they take place after the the Skywalker's oh. trilogy. All right. Or the Skywalker story. I mm. mean, oh, so I guess we're moving on to that. I'll give it a chance. So Star Wars Visions. Do you want to explain it? It's anime with Star yeah. Wars. Yeah. Star Lucasfilm went to Sev- five. They went to several. I yeah, don't know I think how many exactly. I think they went to five uh, popular anime animation studios in Japan. Yes. And told them, here's the Star Wars property. Knock yourselves out. Yeah. So we're Get getting seven want. episodes. So I guess two studios are doing two episodes. Mm-hmm. So I imagine the bigger studios are. And they, mm-hmm. these are anime studios doing Star Wars stories in their own style. Yeah. Um, and I just I immediately assumed they were going to be legends because some of them were kind of ridiculous. The trailer looks cool. I'm not really into mm. anime, but I liked you, a couple of them. Are so. you excited to have a lightsaber umbrella? I was going to bring that one up. Yeah. Right. So stuff like that screams to me like this isn't canon. So it'd be a cool yeah. idea. Someone using lightsaber whips is in it, which gives me some Ferengi vibes. Yeah. My Star Trek fans will get that one. This which is, is one of that the actually used times. to be in Legends too. They used yeah. to have those. Yeah. I don't the, know if that's canon now still, but it was. This is one of the few times where I'll say non-canon would definitely be better for that because it's one of those things where like I like Star Wars stories, but I don't I don't like Star Wars stories that like create something just off the wall and weird. Like I want something that still well, fits within. the What's within weird the world. is this is going to be fan. This is basically Disney just says like, hey, we're going to pay these big animation studios to make fan films because yeah. that's what they're doing. Yeah. It's fan films. Well, but it's yeah. also a little bit of market research. But it's. Because if you find out these do really well, maybe a Star Wars anime show in the style of. Or like. Oh, but I, a, like a full some, anime show. I'm iffy about it, but I guess like. I'll give it a chance. Like I right, said. I'm not. I, so, look, I'm not saying and it's And it'll be in different just, styles. So just because you don't like. more, It's like. It's more of an anthology. Right. Because like I know mm-hmm. there's a. There's an episode that's basically Astro Boy. But in Star Wars, right? There's another one that's a furry, and <laughs> right? Like, and there's I imagine, one that's a rocker story. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, rock star, yeah. whatever. There's one that's I, that pod. It races. looks like a much more, um, like, a much darker story, like almost a noir type thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it'll be interesting. The thing is, like, I don't. And they've done this before, by the way. They've yeah. not in shows and movies, but they, a book was released ra- relatively recently called. Um, from a different point of view. Yeah. And it's an anthology of Star Wars stories written by uh, small time authors and comedians. Yeah. And it basically tell Star Wars stories from a different point of view, like from another character's point of view mm. or what ifs type stories. And it's not canon. I want the so. story of the dude to get his arm cut off by Obi-Wan at Mos Eisley. <laughs> yeah. I, des- I would desperately, I would read we that. Got that prequel one already. should be canon. Yeah. I would read that. that. should be canon. I would read that Wait, book. Wait, hold on. I thought Robot Chicken did one. Yeah, but I mean, I would just make that ro- canon. Zach, I don't. Oh, okay, yeah. I was about to say, I don't think Robot Chicken is canon. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Just make that story. The, canon. the Palpatine stuff should be definitely Robot Chicken is mm. not canon because there's a time in one of their skits where like Batman or Joker gets the electric chair. <laughs> also, at one point, Joker gets a Shawshank Redemption situation where Batman's <laughs> the warden. It, I, I don't really like villain origin stories because I feel like. Hollywood does them terribly because they try to make a hero story out of it. Yeah. And like, I don't like that, but I think that, that with the way that star Wars is, they might actually be able to do a, well, a origin Palpatine, yeah, right? Because he's going to end up being, there's nothing to do the, really. Well, there's start, start from him being young, tell the story of him and Pelagus's and, missions together in Plagueis. And, and then yeah. now if that goes well, you can make that canon and then Pelagus? you can have Plagueis. Pla- Plagueis. Plagueis. You said Pelagius. I, did. I was like, what? I, I said Plagueis. that G wrong. Um, but there's Plagueis. not much to tell there. He was a he was born in Naboo, and then did some training with a with a Sith. But it, it's in, I think it's implied they didn't do much, and that's and that's part of the reason he the killed book, him. The book did did it. The book told yeah. It, told well, and, and that's kind of what I'm saying. And then he you, became a senator. You, you you can kind of build the story of him now. It I don't and like I don't think you really necessarily have to get in, into the politics of it, kind of like mm. the like the original trilogy did. But no. what you would do is you would have him set up, and then you can see him be like, "Oh, you know what? There's not power in going directly after people. There's power in being in a position of authority, yeah, and setting himself up, and then betraying Plagueis once Plagueis helps him get where he's going to go, and then stepping into that role, and then you can have that lead right up to where he meets Anakin for the first time as a kid. No, because we also need to. Because I think something cool to see would also be him uh, allying with Dooku. 
Yes. And setting up and yeah. and convincing Sifo Dias to commission the clone army. There's there there's enough material there that I think that you could do a genuinely good origin story and still make it one of those things. Because I think I mentioned this before on the pod this, on the podcast. Real quick, well, you just said the Sifo Dias story that mm-hmm. already exists. We already have that. We already have the story of Sifo Dias like making from the Clone clones. Wars. Not from Clone Wars, but it's a comic. Oh, no, well, in, comic or a book. St- okay, still, but, yeah, tra- you but transition it to the screen, right? Yeah. You and know, I think cover the whole relationship. Just, but just yeah, like, I just want to be clear. And, like, and, and, it's happened. I don't know the comic and, stuff at all. Right. I know. I know it adds a lot to Vader specifically, like the comic stuff does. But. Right. And I think it's one of those things where like they could actually do kind of like what they did with Thanos in Endgame, where like you you flip it so yeah. it's the hero's journey in the other way. But every single time, God, it was so clever. But the re- but the reason why Thanos was so good is because you're sitting there going, "I hope you're going to choose to do the right thing," and then yeah. he continues to cho- choose to do the wrong thing, and it's like. Okay, like I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for you to not do the thing you're doing. Yeah, and I think that they could do that with Sidious because it's one of those things where they built that world up already, where you yeah. don't want him to control the Empire, you don't want him to kill the Jedi, mm-hmm. but he's going to do it anyway. And yeah. it's very, very difficult, I think, with the world that they've built, to put him in a hero situation and make it like he's the good guy. And then, because that's that's where a lot of these villain origin stories are terrible. Yeah. Where, well, I think I said this about the Joker movie when it first came out is they made it like the Joker was the good guy. And like at the end of it, it was like, well, he did the right thing freeing all these people. It's like, no, that's not why I watched the Joker. I watched the Joker because I know he's going to make the wrong decision. Yeah. And well, like, it, I don't want to be rooting for the villain. Like, yeah. I want to be rooting he against rele- him, but watch him. Get I'm confused. What do, mean, wait, what, do you, because, what do you mean he released the right? I don't understand. What are you talking about? You said the like. They made Joker the hero at the end of it because he so, released. Yeah, yeah so the, the the way that they built um, the Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix, mm-hmm. the thing that I had a problem with is that they made they made the good guys the bad guys and the bad guys the good guys, right? And it wasn't even it wasn't in a way that it was like, hey, we're giving it from their perspective. It was like, no, they had legitimate gripes against these people, and what they were doing was legitimate. Right, but it was it was a story told from the Joker's perspective. Yeah, so yes, that's, which, that was the which, that which was I the think is point. fine, but that's that that only works if the second movie shows that because because right. they showed that like Wayne was a terrible person, didn't have any moral background, like the way, especially because like the way that when the Joker killed the three guys on the train, like they made they made him look like a like. Because he was just like, I don't know these three people, but I know that they were good people. It's like, well, no. Like, if, if you had a genuine hero, or at least somebody that was objective, was like, hey, look, I had three of my employees killed. I don't know what happened, but I'm going to take care of their families. And then you create a hero against right. the villain. Right. That, that's, the, that's the thing, is what they were doing was, it's because you don't know if it happened or not. Yeah. Because we don't yeah. know if it happened or not. It's, it's all under the perspective that Joker is telling you this is what happened. So you yeah. don't, that's, and, it's the, that was the point is you're not stuff, supposed to look at them hero because Joker's not telling it from the point of view of the heroes. He's telling it like every, mm. everyone's a hero in their, in their own story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, well, and Thanos that, is a hero. You just made me think of, uh, hey, uh, Dr. Horrible sing along blog. <laughs> everyone's a hero in their own way. Right. Great song. But, but so <laughs> in like, I, I'm fine with that, but the second movie, if if because I think they're making a second one, right? No. Mm-mm. Oh, I thought no, they were. They're, I, not, I, make, no. they're I, not making a second one. I thought they did, but um, if if they were to make a second one, it would be really good to show it in the perspective of what really happened, and then showing what uh, what went from there. It would. I ru- it would, I, would, I think it would. Ru- in, in, in my in opinion, part, it would in parts of flashbacks where, half, where you're half, showing the Joker's. But half the point of the movie is forth. that you don't know. Because you have an unreliable narrator. But, and it's why I think Taxi Driver did Joker better than Joker did. Was because mm-hmm. it didn't have to tie itself to things like the Batman stuff, like Wayne and... Yeah, yeah we don't have to watch Bruce's parents get killed a Again. hundredth time. Yeah, <laughs> and we don't have to have him survive just in so, case they want a sequel. Like, so so let me use a better example, because this is this is a trope that Hollywood uses, and this is why I see it in the Joker. If you look at like the Maleficent movie, yeah. Maleficent is supposed to be the evil person. But in the Maleficent movie that they made, they actually changed the movie so that she was the hero. She was the one that was like, like the dad, or like the, the, the king had like screwed her over and like caused her problems. And like she did the wrong thing by cursing the child. But in reality, she was a good person. And that's like kind of the trope that they, they put on these these villains. I kind of disagree, but and like, I disagree. I think that. 
I, if you rewatch I, I it think, and think, if, if you think like rewatch well, it watched, and think about, I that. watched it a couple times, and the and the only thing that I came out of was, oh, okay, so there is no one, no one's a good person or a bad person. It's just that you just, it's how it's you, a moral hand, relativism. it's how you handle the cards that were laid to you. So she yeah. had a friend, and that friend also wanted to be king. So he proved how, he, so he like showed how much of a friend he was. By cutting her wings off so he could get a higher get ahead in life and then she took she was betrayed so she let instead of letting that go and finding a way to be peaceful she got she allowed herself to get corrupted with her own evil oh. evil agenda yeah and but- then he got nervous mm. because like he wouldn't have been a he wouldn't have done any bad things anymore or tried to go to war with them if she didn't curse the daughter but she wanted revenge yeah. It's basically that was how I took it. Is like you, it's this is what happens when you are when you take the hands that are dealt or the hand that's dealt to you, and then mm-hmm. you if you don't like it, you take out revenge, and then it yeah. never nobody wins in the end. Yeah, yeah well, it, I guess but, she did. But yeah, but at, like, at the end of that movie, she was actually a hero. It was set. It was set up to where she grew to be a hero. But Maleficent is supposed to be the bad guy. Well, her name's Maleficent. And like, yeah. Well, well, yeah, and I think I think that's the thing that like I want to watch a movie where. She does be malevolent, mm-hmm. and she does get there in the end. Even even if you were to do like an origin story that that, that sets it up, even if she loses in right. the end, I still want to see it from her perspective. Her still being a villain. I don't want to. I don't want to see it at the end where she ends up being happy and being a good person because that's not what Maleficent was. Right. And I think that's the same thing with that you could do here with Sidious, where you can actually set it up to where he does succeed. In the end, it's a happy ending for him, but you do realize the gravity of what happened and the fact that what he did was wrong. Right. In the end, well, I think that actually, what they, I believe my opinion for the Maleficent stuff was that she was just redeemed. Is like she yeah, found redemption, which from, shouldn't you know, have happened. Being, you know, why? Everyone can be redeemed because that's Maleficent. She's not supposed to be a good person. But you can say the same about Darth Vader. Anyone, yeah. Any- Darth Vader did awful stuff, but he was redeemed. Maybe not in the eyes of the galaxy as a whole. But that is his but story. But to himself and his Right, son, but if you believe that redeemed. anyone can be redeemed, even someone, so, even Maleficent can be. Well, well but, but I think the thing is that isn't the story, right? So like in this case, Sidious was never redeemed in the original I am, trilogy. I, I so get that. So if you have him being a redeeming yeah. factor, no, it doesn't I, fit I, with I agree, the but what, story. The flip side is it's a story. Well, that's it the thing. Is where I argue is like it's just I'm, another yeah, person's point of view. You, you seem really married to the whole uh, Sleeping Beauty lore. Why? Because you you do you're not really like the Maleficent you really do character. not like the idea of Maleficent <laughs> well, being a well, good guy. Well, <laughs> well, well no. Well, well, I think that's the thing. Is like Maleficent's character was not redeemed in the original. Right. And now so, you've created yeah. something that isn't Maleficent. Yeah. Someone, created so someone else different. wrote their own fan fiction. And, like, and, 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 and again, yeah. and I, but I think that's the thing that I, I, I'm fine with. But Hollywood does this thing. And like, I, it's one of those things where like I've noticed it. So now I start to pick it up in the other movies. What if I, a, do, but I here's think you're a, getting, what, I think you're taking the wrong problem away from Maleficent. The one thing I are, what if someone just randomly did it? What if someone randomly just wrote a Maleficent? It wasn't Hollywood that did it. It was just someone else wrote, made their own movie. And it was the same. It's just Hollywood uh, well, I mean, was connected. I would mean, you, people do that all the time. Would you? But would you feel the same way? Because I almost feel like you have like a hatred for Hollywood, which is valid. <laughs> which, well, no, but I think which that's, is valid. I think that's one of those things where Hollywood Hollywood like falls into ruts, right? Where like they do the same thing over and over and over again. Well, so uh, if you look at a lot of their villain origin stories, it's not about how the villain becomes evil. It's about how the villain is justified. Okay, but that's not. It's not totally fair to just say they fall into ruts. Zach's not a good because, Christian person cause because he doesn't believe people should be redeemed. Because they do have a reason that they do so. <laughs> so, like, the big problem with the Maleficent is that it spawned that whole thing of creating the the villain story. So you had, mm. um, what was right after it? It was, um, I know they made a sequel. They made Cruella, which apparently was good. They made a sequel to Maleficent? I think they said it made a second one, yeah. That didn't need to happen. Um, what was the other villain one they made? I don't know. I only know of Corella. Oh, God, you asked the question, and now I've lost them, because they've done a bunch of them. They have done a bunch of them. And that's have the they? issue I have with Maleficent, is Maleficent was okay. I didn't mind it. Uh, I heard Corella was really good, but I the liked, other ones suck. I like Corella. Corella yeah, was I heard really Corella good. was good. <laughs> I do, I do um, need to watch that one. So, and, oh, but it's not good. necessarily... like you, I guess you could look at it as Hollywood falling in a rut, mm. but Hollywood does what's well, safe. They well, know what makes money. Like, uh, I was going to say it earlier. Yeah, I wonder if Joker first. wouldn't have been made if Taxi Driver hadn't been made. If Scorsese hadn't made Taxi Driver mm. 
and they hadn't gotten Scorsese on as an executive or as a producer for pre-production, mm-hmm. guarantee you Joker would not have been the movie it was. Well, I think oh, I th- I agree with that. Well, one of the things that I mentioned would have been too risky. One of the things that I mentioned in 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 Joker, and I think you had a you had a good argument against it, but one of the things that I mentioned in Joker was a huge difference in the Joker movie is literally one scene, and it's the train scene where he kills the three guys mm-hmm. because they made it legit, like it was legitimate self defense. It wasn't him. If they would have changed that story to where they were just making fun of him, and he because mm-hmm. right. in they in the beginning of the movie these kids beat him up, and he's like, "Look, they're kids; they don't know any better. That's okay." Yeah, and it's one of those things where he can like he can understand why the kid wouldn't do it, but but he also there's like a certain point where it's like once you're an adult, you don't get mercy. So, right, but, the, well, but if the these guys were making self, fun of him, but where you say self defense, I, I'll let you finish. Yeah, that first. so so if they're just making fun of him. And then he chooses, you know, you know what? You're adults, you know better. And he shoots and kills all three of them. He's now chosen to be evil. He's now chosen to do something that's beyond the 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 punishment for the consequence. Yeah. In I, this, in, in, but in, on the subway scene, all three of them are beating the ever living out of him. He could have been killed. Okay. And he shoots the first two. Now, I believe you made the argument that he did kill the third in cold blood. Yes. But he was already driven to that point. He he was forced into doing a quote unquote. Yeah, but thing. if you bring that's the but, moment that that's the po- that's the entire point of that scene is that yes, he killed in self defense, but then he killed out of cold blood because he, he liked had a chance it. to get away because he liked it. That's that's the whole point well, of the, that scene. The part that I argue because you said about like they were beat because they were beating him up. Yeah, but when he pulled the gun, the fighting stopped. They stepped back. No, he it, it, chose, I think I think if you rewatch it, he pulled, they stop when the first shot is shot. But when you're in a defense, like when you're in a when you're in a situation like that, you are 100 percent justified in shooting until the threat is gone. Right. But we're but we have proof in real life that that's not how it works, that pulling the gun, if they don't have a gun, it's not considered self-defense anymore. No, not true. If, 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 you, if you're in mortal danger, three on one, you shoot until they until you know. And now, if they start running, that's different. But if all three of them are still standing over top of you and they're not retreating and you shoot in self-defense, three on one, you're 100% justified in taking those shots. I, the way I remember that scene, it's not how it plays out. And when I say we have evidence of it is that we there's many cases where someone shot in self-defense, but because the person didn't actually continue to fight, they just like shot. So mm-hmm. what? Okay, a good example so I is, pulled the scene up. Um, he's So he's laying on the ground getting kicked by them. Mm-hmm. Um, the camera cuts away from him and is looking up at two of the other characters. Then you hear a gunshot and the guy blood sprays against the ceiling and the guy falls backwards. Yeah, he, he they're immediately still turns, kicking him when he yeah, gets shot. He immediately turns, shoots the other one. Yes. Self defense. Like yeah, both, he, they, first they, two complete to his. So if we want to start, which okay, we're not lawyers. We don't yes. know anything about law, but <laughs> I feel very confident in saying that legally speaking, right there, right, right up until. Right up until the moment he gets, because so he shoots the first guy mm-hmm. while he's still on the ground. The other guy stops kicking for a split second, but then immediately gets shot. Yes, still totally justifiable. Yes. that the it's guy still kept kicking. Mm-hmm. As soon as that happens, the one guy backs up and then starts running out of the train. Joker then stands up and starts shooting at his back. Yeah, right there. Okay, well, adrenaline, that's not, that's... adrenaline. It's it. You you would have a hard time arguing that yeah. as self defense. But not that hard. See, I would argue that. The guy makes it out of the train defense. car. And, well, and, and, and I and believe Joker actually shoots him as he's once he's on the steps. steps. I know he shoots him going up the steps, but I thought he he like cripples him with a yeah, shot. Yeah, he and cripples then, him with a and shot then and then goes up. Him. Now, now that being said, even though the guy is running, it's one of those things where it at that point it would be considered murder legally, but it's understandable. The adrenaline's rushing. You were just getting your ass handed to you. Like, no, the, I, I, the I panicked and I shot a guy that was running because he was just assaulting okay, me. That's and I how wasn't you would argue yet. it in court. Yes. Yes. But, but at the same time, he was driven to the point, like it, it was reasonable for him to defend himself. And then it's like, it's like, well, he was, th- the world forced him to be bad. He never chose to be bad, but I think that's the thing where it's like, he was put in a position, and then at that point, he was pushed to a place where it's like, well, now I have to be evil because well, now I've killed someone. Well, that's, but that's the point. And that's point. a different story. Well, that's the point of the Joker's story, though. Yeah. Because every bit of the Joker's origin is that joke. And that's like that's also part of like Joker's shtick, especially mm-hmm. in one of the most famous comics, The Killing Joke. Mm-hmm. Uh, that when we fir- learn his origin, uh, he's just a normal dude like me and you. Or like, well, like all of us. <laughs> but, like all three of us. But... Uh, 
what happens is like a bunch of bad things happen and mm-hmm. then he just gets driven crazy just by the fact that the world didn't like him for being a comic. He had a dead end job because he didn't like his job and he didn't mm-hmm. and he would apply and move he would apply and couldn't get other jobs. Like he had a pregnant girlfriend who had died, which now got that canon that got changed to a really crappier canon, but <laughs> she died. She supposed she supposedly died by a freak accident. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so he and then he gets dropped in the in a vat of acid trying to help some bank robbers that he doesn't want to help anymore because he has no reason to. Yeah, and he falls because he falls because he trips on his cape because the bat was there mm-hmm. and forced him to. And he fell and then he comes out. His his skin's bleached and he his everything burns and he just loses his mind. Yeah. So like the world created him into that. It was just that like one last push, and then. Mm. That's what the Joker says in the killing joke with what he's trying to prove with Gordon is he kidnaps Gordon. He shoots his daughter enough where he cripples her, strips her down naked, rapes her, and then takes photos of her naked body and then forces him, Jim Gordon, to strip down and then ride in a tunnel of love with pictures of his daughter in that situation. And the, mm. jo- and the point of what he says to Batman is every one of us is crazy it just takes a little push. We're all on the cliff of sanity. Yeah. And one one we're all one bad day from going crazy. So what had happened and, and that's where in this one, the point of the Joker film is he's just a dude who's just going through a bad time. Yeah. He just wasn't mentally stable, just like Joker in well, the killing joke is. And what mm-hmm. happens is is once he finds because he never feels confident, he doesn't feel anything. Once he shoots two people in that self defense, he real you can see it's like, I like that. It's well, the first it, time I feel confident and it's the first yeah. time I feel powerful. And then he it's takes not, another dude. I don't dude's think it's left. framed that way either. I think the way that, that the the way the shot is framed, because he doesn't immediately chase the guy. He gets his bag and he kind of looks around in, in almost confusion. And yeah. I think the the way the whole thing is framed, and then he ch- as he chases the guy down and sh- just shoots him right in the back, well, I think it's framed more in the way of like he's standing there thinking like, oh my god, what have I done? And then start and then deciding like, wait, these guys wronged me, like, and then going for revenge. No, yeah, that, this well, guy, walking, the walking was Fe- gone. Well, the way that Walking Phoenix and them explained how that scene is supposed to be, how it was portrayed to them, was mm-hmm. the idea that after he pulls. After going through a life of just never feeling like he was on top of the world, always feeling yeah. like this is a dude who's just beaten down, he gets for the first time ever the bullies, which he calls the world, yeah. who are who he takes out and he feels stronger than them. At that point, he he's starting to lose, he's starting to break, and what happens is he's he goes after that third person because he actually enjoys killing them, mm-hmm. and then once the once. The adrenaline from the kill goes. He runs to the bathroom, which then Joaquin says once he gets to the mirror, he realizes, I like this. This is how I want to be. Yeah. So like, well, the and, po- and that was the point that they were trying to make with the film is they were trying to t- do it in the, in the style of Taxi Cab, but mm-hmm. also reflecting the- Taxi f- Driver. Or Taxi <laughs> Driver. Taxi Cab's a whole different movie. Right. Uh, taxi- <laughs> Very different movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> taxi Driver. But with, the, with the, the idea of, with the one idea that, he was one a mentally in, a mentally unstable person who just snaps one like from mm-hmm. who finally realizes he's powerful and then take and then snaps because it, one of the things that he that uh, the director said is like every time you see him kill somebody uh, the way they shot it the way they put an effect over the over the scene mm-hmm. and that's to like represent like the Joker feeling like him feeling like how he's supposed, how he thinks he's supposed to be. Yeah. You see it really, you see it more in when he kills his mother because that's the last anchor that's holding the Joker back. Yeah. And, well, and I think, and again, like, like, and I agree with you guys that, that that's a strong argument for this is what tilted him. And, but I think like even in the killing joke, he like when he, when he falls into the vat after he comes out of the vat, he's like, all right, I'm done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go cause chaos. Now it's still a choice. Like, and I think that's the thing that makes the Joker cool is that like at a certain point he broke and then made the choice to continue to do the wrong thing. Like, even if, even if you're going to make the no, point they, that he was no, pushed and it, then he went insane, they make that's it clear. Fine. They make it clear. But, Cause when he crawls, when he crawls out of it, the only thing he does is laugh. Yeah. At that point he's broken. He's yes. not, it's no longer, it's, it comes down to the theory is like, when is someone sane enough? When is a sane person making a decision? And when is someone not making a decision? 
like when a healthy brain is making a decision versus yeah, when, versus a, healthy, when a brain's not. And that's what the point is. Like the moment he starts laughing, because you see like that unbelievable face. I have it over here. I'll grab it. <laughs> but like um, a face of him so, laughing and holding his head. Yeah. That's yeah. the moment. The where, baby there, thing. Because there's the baby. There's uh, <laughs> there's like blood like coming down like mm. his, like and from his lips and stuff. That's like. That's to represent like the cracks because they look like mirror cracks. Yeah, and that's to represent like a crack yeah. of his of he's he's lost. Yeah. I've never at that liked... point. It's no longer the it's no longer uh, Jack. I think is what they like call him as his name. Yeah. It's no longer Jack that's there. It's mm. it's the Joker. Jo- the Jack is dead. Yeah, Joker's well. No, and I think that that like that story is still. Like that story is better. It's because it's an origin story where it, it gets him there, and it gets him there in a way that like you understand how he got there, also and you understand why. One why of the he best the jokes ever said. Do you know how many times we went to war over a flock of seagulls on the screen? I'm great, if you think about it. <laughs> he says that to Batman. He's like, "Do you know how many times we went to war over a flock of geese on a computer screen?" <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, he's got a point. <laughs> but like, it's the I've, it's I've, the idea that they accidentally think that it's mil. Because it, it's military, it's military equipment coming to attack us, but yeah. it's just a flock of geese. So they like scram the jets. I, That's uh, happened in real life before. <laughs> I just, I just, I've never liked Britain military. Like, yeah, no, really. I'm always the like, Joker can be cool. Like I've liked him in like Heath Ledger's approach, and obviously Joaquin mm-hmm. Phoenix. This was great, but the one that's always bugged me is the whole thing of like everyone's just one bad day away from becoming me. Because I just think it's a really reductive view of. I think. I think people. I just tend to have a better outlook on how on the well, good on how people can be good. The funny yeah. thing is there are people there there's actually like well okay, there's I've there's never read it, there's, but... there's there's ties to reality with it. So uh I wish I knew all this stuff cuz this was a long time ago when I watched this, but there was a guy he called it our shadow. There was a doctor he called it our shadow. Mm-hmm. And he was under the same impression cuz by using examples I think of it's these Jung of these three people, he, they pulled three people out of history that were big examples of this. And one was a kid who was just celebrating his 22nd birthday, I believe. And he was coming home, perfectly normal kid, uh, just had kind of some bad things at home and everything like that. Um, and he was walking by a homeless man. The homeless man asked him for money. He said, I don't have any and walked away. And the homeless man replied back, like f you or something like that insulted him and mm-hmm. he murdered him he brutally murdered him Jeez. stabbing him 15 times wait which one who murdered who the the kid the teenage kid the teenage, the, the, the 22 year old kid yeah. on his birthday murdered who the, he the, the, homeless guy. the homeless guy the homeless guy murdered the kid no the kid <laughs> murdered the homeless guy i hope you recognize how unclear your wording was every step of that process I don't think so. Zach seemed to I, figure it out. Well, I also knew the story before, so I okay, wasn't, well, I I, wasn't I, sure. Because yeah, uh, you you started out by saying uh, saying the, saying what happened, and then you 20, say, and then he murdered fine. him. I'll I'm do, like, okay, I'll, fine. I'll, I'll, I know, I understand I'll now. redo the story. I understand I'll redo now. the story for the and people now we, at home. I'll redo the, the story question. for people at home. I just want to point <laughs> to you that I wasn't, it wasn't me trying to be a dick. down the train tracks. I legitimately didn't understand. Daddy and daddy are fighting again. I legitimately did not understand which one you meant. Okay. So the the second one was a woman... Uh, so she, I think okay, she was like a social worker or some, some case or no, she was a teacher, she yeah. was a teacher. I think, see, it looks like you actually know this story. So this is crazy. So tell me if I get these wrong. Cause I, this is all two years I've watched this. So she was a teacher. Uh, she got, she lost, she, she was gunning for like a promotion and she didn't get the promotion. Uh, and then just snapped and murdered the murdered her boss. The worst one was a guy who's still at large on the FBI's most wanted list. Yeah. Uh, was working a perfectly normal job, like nine to five job, had, had a wife and two kids was in like a, was portrayed by everyone that knew him, like as a happy family mm-hmm. came home one day, murdered them both and then ran away. And no one knows where he's been since. Okay. But <laughs> that's three else. people. There's many. Yeah. They, they pulled three people out of many to, occurrences. Yeah. Is what I'm well, telling yeah. you. But no, and I, 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 those I are three. Those are three stories that, of many other cases like this. Yeah. And what the belief is that people can be pushed, and that's where the Joker's. The, that's where that killing joke I mean, comes. The reason that was written is because of those stories. Because it was a yeah. good. It was a good story for the Joker. But I think it just it portrays this image of like when people run into hardship, they're going to prefer to be selfish, and and I don't think so. I think people tend to. In hardship, more often band together and help I, each other and be I good ag- people. Well, I agree, but that's the point. That's why, like Batman and Joker, are like a flip of a coin is like mm. J- Bat. 
man had ex- had pretty much the same bad things happen to him, and he became good because he was righteous and stuff. And Joker did. <laughs> and that even but, depends on who but, you ask. But that was the. <laughs> yeah. p- but that's like the interesting of the study of us all having like our mm-hmm. own shadow. Like we, mm-hmm. I do. That's, when I get angry, I do yeah. bad things that I probably wouldn't do as a normal person. Now I won't yeah. jump to killing anybody. Well, yeah. But that's where the joke, where that theory was that people can be driven to that to a madness where they yeah. will kill someone, and that's I, where and, the Joker and is. I ima- and I do imagine that ev- everyone, every human, has that point. I right. just don't think it's one bad day, as the Joker phrases it, implying well, yeah. that anyone well, can. It, all it takes is a little push. No, what he's saying is like for him, your, it was after one bad everything day. happens in your life, you're going through anything that happens. If everything was bad enough to add up, it's one more bad day that pushes you over the edge. Yeah, but that's he, what he was. Into. But no, I think because because both don't like the wording of it. There's, just, there, there's there's two things here that I think are important. I think that Hollywood portrays it as like anyone is capable of that. And I think it's it's one of those things where it's not anyone. There's I specific believe, people. I believe but anyone is capable of it. I, I think it, you are crazy also, if you don't. If if you, <clears throat> Zach, if you woke up tomorrow morning <clears throat> and like you shot up like you shot up like a bank or something and someone said like, like someone asked me like, can you imagine him doing it? I was like, yeah, I could. Are you? I, are you? Projecting? No, <laughs> projecting. I no. couldn't imagine. If someone told me Zach that, that was doing that, I'd call them a liar. Well, do you ever, like? Because I, that's not in his I mean, nature. Well, and no, I think the thing like, is, I can imagine all of you doing something bad. Would you do it? Probably not. I don't. I would never bet money on it. But I, I could definitely see Zach, all. Doing I don't it. know. I feel like this says well, more no, about I him think, than it does about us. No, it doesn't well, it, say it, anything about me. And, and <laughs> I think it does. In, in, in this kind of, I have so little points. faith in us. No, I'm saying that any one of us can, can be driven. To that. I, but I do but believe. Your first instinct isn't to call that person a liar. Your first instinct is to say, "Oh yeah, I guess they could do that." Well I, I, well, I think there's no, there's, like, there's a difference here. The thing here is, is like, if there's evidence that shows you doing it, and someone's and you're at court and you've been convicted yeah. of it, and someone comes up and be like, "Can you believe he did it?" I was like, "Well, yeah, because it happened. Like, I can see it happening because it did you, happen." Your well, instinct wouldn't be, "There must be something wrong. He wouldn't do that." Well, the idea is but, that no, because I can tell you what happened because I saw it happen. <laughs> you, were, you didn't well, say I you think, were there. You said someone came up to you the next day and said it happened. Yeah, because you were arrested. Are you sure you didn't do it? You're changing the story a lot. Did I, I get not. framed? Did I get framed? <laughs> but no, I think I think I think what you're getting at is that people are capable of things. Um, Everyone yeah. is capable I've, of it. I, I, That's I've had the a, point. I've had a now family member since I got married. Uh, I've I've had a now family member that has done some heinous things, and at the end of the day, I was like, you know, yeah, I was capable of seeing them do that, but that fell in line with their personality. It wasn't right. something. It wasn't one of these things where, and I think this is what Hollywood does, where it's like it's a perfectly normal person all of a sudden snaps. No, it's normally somebody that's already at the end of the road. I'm just saying anyone, you, anyone there's can also do the, anything, and anyone can be driven to anything. It just depends on how you do. No, it. I disagree with that because that's social too. construction. That's saying that your society can make you be anything, and that's not true. Oh well, that's that's that not true. Can at be all. true. That's not true. That at all. can be true. When the reason I being think, is is that we we prove. I, I think we're getting into. Much I, deeper weeds than we should be with several on. minutes left to hit before we hit an hold hour. On. I've of this got show. one last point that I do think is fun, but I do think that you're correct. It does work with the Joker and Batman right. because good stories are told at the extremes. They're not told at yeah. the average person. Right, right. And like, but I think that those are the that's two correct. things that, that make it fun. So that's one of those things where it's kind of hard. And from from the other argument, it's that, weird like, to have fun with the idea of a clown that, that just murders. And also, I think <laughs> murders so many right. people. Does it? Does the comic play it straight? Like, as in. That what he's saying is true, or do they play it as if he thinks what he's saying is true? That's a good question. Wait, wait in the com- in the when Killing Joe comment? when he says that yeah. when he says that line, do do is it is it does it play out in a way where it seems like the comic is telling you what he's saying is true, or does it seem like the Joker just thinks what he's saying is true? Are you talking about his past when it talks? No, about the, his past? that when he says that line. What, what like, anyone can be like yeah, everyone's that one line, bad that day. Specific line. No, that's him saying that. Yeah, because in the comic book, I should really preface this too. In mm-hmm. the comic book, um, Batman does save Jim, obviously. Yeah. But one of the one of the things he brings up to like Joker gives a debate with Jim about is like you should arrest if if someone is going against the book, like of how mm-hmm. you would arrest someone who's a victim of crime. What would you do? He said, I'd throw the book at him. So they said they gave him a book and said throw it at. Throw it at who you think should be it. And he throws it the Joker. Well, immediately Batman's face comes up. <laughs> so the Joker is trying to say, like, everyone's like me, right? Yeah. Everyone's like me. Well, Batman, when he gets to his final confrontation with the Joker, he said he says, he's like, You were wrong, Joker. He's like, Jim's fine. He wants he wants this done by the book. He's like, You weren't you weren't right. Not everyone is like you. So and that was the thing. Yeah. It's like that's the con with the, yeah. You know, he he contrasts. So, so what? The, then why are you agreeing with it then? I'm just saying that the, you. I'm I think it's possible. Yeah, it's yeah. possible. Yeah. 
I mean, we have evidence of it being possible that people can be driven. I, I think it just more bugs me down. that you would then say that you could believe Z- Zach or I are capable of that kind of stuff. That's like that. just me being co- like comic relief to like. Okay. That's not. I don't oh. actually think if you called, if someone called me and said that <laughs> Zach <laughs> shot up a school of children, I'd be like, nah, that didn't happen. No, Zach well, didn't. All right, blow so you're up. saying I can trust you if I need a yeah. job done. Well, I think. It, 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 <laughs> well. <laughs> well, great. thank you all for listening. It was a lot of fun. If you want to find us online, just Google Pop Culture Unboxing. I'm sure something will come up. Mm. Um, and if you want to find me, you can go on Twitter oh, and oh, do. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about the Joker. I didn't do the hand thing. <laughs> Not the wrong Joker. We don't. We pretend he doesn't exist. He's non. So uh, the DC universe. Twitter, Matt Ross Vo, uh, Twitch, Jan Jinkle. Uh, who wants to go next? Uh, my name's Ryan Nair. Na- how do you say Nair. that? Nair. It, it's literally your name backwards. How do you Nair. not know it? <laughs> yeah, Ryan. Why can't you pronounce words backwards? I am Ryan Nair, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> Nair, Ryan Nair. And you find me at like Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at Riki Tiki 252. Probably will get changed again when I feel more confident in myself. <laughs> Also, when there Zach, you go, over com- or confident well, Ryan. There's your there's your new overconf- tag. Oh, it's no way. I don't think there's enough character. I think there's too many characters anyway. You can find me your at turn. little underscore leaf l i e f. Uh, that underscore is important. Where? I am not a middle aged Brazilian woman. That's on Twitter. And you okay. can find me at little space leaf on Twitch. I is should be streaming this Sunday. Yep. Yeah. Are you sure? I think it's I think it's just a space. What are you streaming this Sunday? What are you streaming this Sunday? I will be streaming probably around 4.30. I'll be playing these. I didn't ask 000. when. I said, what will you be streaming? Oh, okay. Did I say what or did I say I don't when? know. I was, I was going to do both. <laughs> My brain left out the first. I, I heard you ask, you going to be streaming this Sunday? I didn't hear the well, first word. Well, it was going to answer the question. It's the 75,000 guarantee Sunday WSOP poker tournament. So you're gonna make, you could win $75,000? No, 75,000 prize pull guarantee. So I'll probably win like ten grand if I take first. Nice. Wow, you're taking that. You We're took that for very you. lightly. We'll have oh, our, I probably just we'll made 10 our, grand. We'll have our, our Zach pennant flags and everything. Hey, well, Zach's rich enough that 10 grand doesn't sound like a lot of money to him. Yeah. He <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just used to poker grand. numbers. I can win <laughs> 10 grand. It's not a, I mean, my biggest score. change yeah. for you loser poor I dig, people. I, I dig around in the couch cushions to find more than that. You guys well, I mean, are that, poor. That would, that would still be my biggest score. My biggest score, I think, was 7 grand in the tournament. But Look at me. I'm good at poker. My name's Zach. <laughs> I mean... You're right. That was me. (laughs) Thank you all for listening. I love you. Bye. Have fun.